Hello, my name's Chris Beard. Welcome to this F11 Landscapes Friday feedback session. We're pre-recording this one this time because we have a little bit of problems with lag last time we did it. So this is the second video in the series. If this kind of thing interests you and you'd like to become involved, then please hop over to our Facebook page, F11 Landscapes, and click the membership. We'll accept you as a member and then all you need to do is look out for the posts that we put up regularly asking for images for feedback on and then when we've got a few together we'll organize another session and you might see your image actually discussed live on this channel so what i'd like to ask you to do is if you like this video please consider hitting that subscribe button ticking a like for us we all like likes and also click the bell icon to be notified of any other videos that we upload. We're now in our second period of lockdown here in the UK. So we do plan to release maybe two, three, four videos a week just to keep you entertained through this very, very difficult time. So thank you for watching. I'm going to head over to the computer. Why don't you join me? Let's jump right in to another Friday feedback. First thing, we've had this image submitted by one of our members. Um, it is a bit too small. I don't know what it's coming out on your screens, but it, it is a little bit too small for me to actually provide some good feedback and for you to see what I'm talking about. I have contacted the photographer and asked them to send a larger version, but they haven't yet responded. So if this is your image, please resubmit it in a larger size. I'll put a link to a video which will show you how you can do that to this post. Um, send it again another time and we will happily go through it for you on another session. So as I say, it, it is a bit too small. So let's move on. This is an image that's been submitted by one of our members. It looks to me as though it's been taken up on Dartmoor, somewhere like that, one of the uh, little groups of standing rocks. So let's have a look and go through this and examine an image. I'm just going to create a new layer here. Um, pick up a colour that you can all see and make my little brush a bit smaller. So, this is a technique that you'll all be able to use when reviewing your images. So what are we looking at? Obviously we've got the, the stones there. We know it was taken on a fairly cloudy day. There are some blue patches, so the photographer would be getting probably the odd intermittent burst of sunshine coming through but when they chose to take this image, there was only light coming through the clouds. So that's given us a very, very soft image, no direct sunlight. So we've got no harsh highlights and dark shadows in it. So that can actually work to our advantage in a lot of circumstances. It allows us to capture a lot of detail in the image. So looking round, I'm looking at this area here, that's going to be our brightest area in the image. And conversely, in here, these are going to be our darkest areas. Now, maybe down here as well. There's not a lot we can do about that. It is what it is. That's just one of the hazards that we've, we've got with this image um, taken at this particular time. Um, it doesn't detract from it because when the photographer was there, those areas probably wouldn't have any details in them to his eye. So that's fine. There's another area here. This little area down here, I don't know what it is, litter, bits of sheep's wool. I find that a bit distracting as well from, from the image. I'm a great stickler for trying to make our images as perfect as possible. So it would have wouldn't have been a problem for the photographer just to move into his scene or her scene, pick up those bits and take them away. But they've chosen not to do that, but we can do it quite easily in Photoshop by just picking up 
our little clone tool and a little wipe and they're gone. It's as easy as that. So, is there anything we can do to actually improve this image? Well, we'll come up to our curves adjustment layer. Now, I'm sure you've all seen this before. If you haven't, I will produce a, a video in the not too distant future just explaining what it is, how to use it. But what we're basically looking at are the tones in the image going from black and no detail on the left here to bright white and no detail on the right there. We can see that there is no tones from about here to the end. So that tells us that there's no clipped highlights in it, but all the tones have been squashed into the darker areas. We can bring all that information back by just clicking and dragging this little... There we go. It didn't want to work. So if we bring that up to where the tones in our image start, we've made a tremendous difference to our image. Can you see that? We've opened up a lot more colour, a lot more brightness. With one simple click, we haven't adjusted the image in any way. It just tells us that the photographer had maybe underexposed this image very slightly. Maybe half a stop, three quarters of a stop, that's all. Now we can continue to play about with this image. We can now see where our new white point is or our burnt out highlight point. And we can just play about with that curve until we get an image that we, we like. One thing to bear in mind though, is that as we adjust this curve, we also affect the colors in our image because we're looking at a red channel, a green channel, and a blue channel. So combined by changing that curve, we've actually changed the colors in our image. If we want to revert to no changes in color, just what we call luminosity, which is the brightness and darkness of the image, we come up to this button here in our layers palette, come down to luminosity, and that will actually remove any color cast that we've actually brought in by adjusting our curves adjustment layer. Just a couple of clicks there, and I think we've improved that image no end. If I was there, I'd be thinking to myself, there's no reference point in this image for showing viewers how big those stones actually are. You know, at the moment, the photographer's just stood there, composed it in the middle, clicked his shutter, and that's what we've got. I'd like to include some context. Maybe we could get down low, down here, and maybe make this really big in our frame by using a wide angle lens. Maybe we can look for some repeating patterns in these rocks and patterns in the clouds so we can get matching patterns. Maybe we can find a, a position whereby we can create some interesting shapes with these rocks. Just rather than just taking the shot face on, move about, go higher, go lower. See what we can find, see if we can make something interesting out of this rock formation. But really nice image, thank you so much for submitting it. And I've just shown in a couple of clicks there how we can maybe just improve it very slightly. Let's move on to our next image. Once again, very similar, we have um, this photograph of what looks like, I'd say drift wood, but it's a bit bigger than wood, it's a drift log. Um, the photographer tells us that it was about four feet in size. But as with the last image, we have no actual point of reference for that. Looking at it, that could be a small piece of wood, a couple of inches long, or 
something four foot long. There is no reference point. If we come back and I do my analysis, it is really nice. Um, you know, being converted to black and white, obviously. The only thing that bothers me is that little white object there. I find that a little bit distracting. And for processing this part of the log here, it is very bright. And I think should we do any processing to that image to try and see if we can bring out some of the detail, I think we're always going to have a problem with that bright patch of the log there. What can we do? I think I'm probably looking to focus on this face of the log there because by applying our curves again and we can have a look at the tones we can see that there are a few very bright tones here and once again if we move up here this area does start to go quite burnt out. So we don't have a lot of leeway, unfortunately, there. If for the time being we forget about this area and we just concentrate on the piece that's in fact, what we'll do is we'll come down and we will do something like that. And let's go to our curves layer again. We can then start to put a little bit of contrast in there. And I'm thinking if we were looking at it head on, you know, there'd be some really nice details in this weathering pattern here. We can see maybe some saw marks on it. Um, we have the areas of decay in it. So we could make a really nice abstract image. But if we just go back, then I think at the moment it's just lacking that bit of impact. Let me know in the comments what you think about this image. Um, this has been very nicely shot and you can obviously see quite easily what the photographer was looking at, all the texture and detail in the eroding sides of the wood, maybe even, you know, this detail here. But I think with images like this, you've got to actually focus in on one part of it and make a really different abstract type image. But thanks for sending that one in. Let's move on. An image from Anglesey. Um, beautiful image. So thank you for sending this one in. Let's do our little analysis. This little area bothers me there, <laughs> and a little one there. Um, very, very minor details. If we, if we just pick up our clone tool, you know, we can make them disappear very easily and their little bits of artifacts that were there when the photographer took it, which once you spot them, your eye constantly goes to them. Um, so I think that strengthens it. Now, I've been looking at this for some time. You know, we've got some beautiful colours in the sky there. Beautiful pinks, beautiful blues taken at probably what we call blue hour, um, longish exposure to render the sea soft. We do get a little bit of movement in the seaweed here, but that can't be avoided. Everything's in focus from close in to our main subject, which is our lighthouse and the island beyond. So, you know, it is a really, really nice image. There is something that I spotted if we just come up here and pull one of our 
straight lines down and I put this on the horizon at this side here that's on the horizon look how much it dips on the left hand side and conversely if we put the line on the horizon on the left hand edge look how much it rises on the right hand side so then I got looking at the lighthouse itself and if we bring straight edges across to the edges of the lighthouse we can see that the lighthouse is actually perfectly vertical so I think what's happened here the photographer has used a wide angle lens and pointed it slightly downwards which causes what we know as converging verticals so any vertical lines will actually start to home in on a center point at the top of our image only very slightly the more you tilt your camera the more obvious this becomes so I think the photographer has maybe had his camera pointed slightly downwards which has caused the lighthouse to go out of alignment and in post-processing he's chosen to make the lighthouse straight which has altered the horizon if we just go back a little bit I'll show you what I mean if we just take another copy here um, edit transform and we go to rotate and let's just rotate our image until that horizon is straight so I think we're probably looking somewhere around there okay and now let's look at our lighthouse that is just gone ever so slightly ever so slightly out of alignment doesn't look as straight as it once was there's not a lot we can do about that you know we can spend a bit of time in Photoshop trying to correct those verticals but the photographer has made a decision and that's what landscape photography is all about it's about making decisions um, we have straight, straightened up the horizon which makes it a little bit more pleasing but that puts a little bit of lean onto our lighthouse. One final thing, um, it is a lovely image, we've got a lot of what we call negative space at the sides of our two or three main subjects um, and I also think these are subjects as well so let's just see if we can tighten that up a little bit with a different composition let's just try something like this that kind of distills the main subjects into one small frame there we can also show you just how different that image would look on different backgrounds if we go on a, a dark background then we tend to get or subconsciously resolve more detail in the darker areas of our image if we come to a lighter background then these darker areas we can't resolve as much detail because we're blinded by the, the border so when we are processing our images it's one thing to keep in mind the colour of the background we actually are doing our processing on and make sure it reflects what colour if we're going to print it out and have it on a mount um, what colour mount we use that's why I have an off-white coloured background because if I print out my images I usually have an off-white mount in the frame but occasionally we'll use a black mount and we can actually see which is best there so there is no right or wrong it's a beautiful image no matter what crop you use we just go back to the original one there we go 
I think it's up to individual preference. There is no right or wrong. But I'm just giving an alternative view of what is a beautiful image. Thank you so much for sending that one in. Let's move on. Now, this image is one that really got me thinking. Um, we have these beautiful, let's just move that to one side. So we have this beautiful image here, some cows grazing on this little peninsula of land. We have this amazing lighting here on that little section. We have obviously the sun fading down behind. Um, very, very nice image. However, my subconscious tells me there's something not quite right about it. Let me show you what I mean. If we have a look at the animals, we can see that they've all got a rim lighting on them. You see the little light? Now that tells us that the illumination in the image is coming from behind them because the light is shining this way. The side nearest us is in shadow and that's how, why we get that rim light. However, this cow here, the light is coming from this side. Can you see there? So with our main source of light here, why would that side of the cow be illuminated? I don't know. Um, a few other things as well. We can see this side, this tree hillside here is totally in shade. And most of this is in shade as well, but we have a little, little bit of light here which again suggests that whatever sunlight is coming from this kind of direction. But we have no main, we can't see the sun here. And I find that a little bit confusing because I would have thought we'd have seen the sun because we do definitely have sunlight here. So where's the sun? And if we look closely, there does seem to be here and here, some traces of processing work done. So I don't know whether another sky has been put in or part of a sky added. There's absolutely, don't get me wrong, there's absolutely nothing wrong whatsoever with doing that. Um, and whoever has done that has done a fairly good job, but looking at images for many, many years, it just kind of strikes me as being odd that I would have expected to see a sun there because we do have the bright patches on the ground, bright patches of sunlight on the ground. Um, so, yeah, very, very confusing. And I think this is one of the things that is really, really important for us to keep in mind when we do our post-processing. Very often we'll look at an image and something in our brains will tell us that it's not all 100%. Puts that little doubt in our minds and that can, that can cause a little bit of uneasiness in the viewer's mind. But notwithstanding, it's been really well done, really well attempted. I would just say again, I think it could possibly be improved with a crop. If we do a letterbox, which is a 16.9 crop, and let me just show you what I mean. Do something like this. I think we need to get all that cloud in there. And I'm also very careful of these trees on the ridge line here. I think it's important to include those because they make nice little touches. So, 
So yeah, something like that. Um, to me, that just makes it a little stronger. What do you think? Let's have some comments, please. Um, we have that, which gives us a lot of space around here, a lot of dark space on both sides. But just by cropping in that little bit from the sides and the bottom, kind of focuses our attention down here, which is where all the interest is and where I'm sure the photographer wants all the viewers to look. The beautiful light, the rim lighting down here, that's where the interest is. Okay, I'll be interested to see what you think. And moving on to our final image. Thank you again for sending this one in. Um, we're obviously looking at a, let's just do our, so we're obviously looking at a little woodland scene. We have the remains of a, a building here, might be the remains of a water wheel or something. A lovely little stream leading our eye through the image and we have the autumn colours. Really, really nice. Um, for me, I think like the very first image we looked at, it's a bit low in contrast and also the stonework on the building blends in very nicely with the autumnal tones. And I think I'd like that to stand out a little bit more. Um, so let's have a look and see what we can actually do with this image. If we go to our curves layer as before, and we look at the tones in our image, we can see that there are a lot of dark areas. And this is probably referring to these bits in here and we don't have any bright tones. So once again, let's just click and drag our little marker here and bring it in, not going too far, somewhere like that. And what a difference that's made already. Okay. We can go to town a little bit more on our image. Um, as I said, this does look a little bit orangey red blends in a bit more so let's see if we can make that stand out. So we pick up our colours, our saturation and if we click on here Photoshop is telling us that these are reds so if we just reduce the reds a little bit we don't want to go too overboard and we come back to our layers and can you see how we've just toned those down a little bit? We obviously have toned down the reds in the rest of our image which we don't want to do. So we can correct that by coming up to our fill tool and we fill our layer mask with black which hides all the adjustment white reveals, black conceals, little tip to remember. If we pick up a white brush, then we can now start to paint over our building. And remember white reveals, we're now revealing that desaturation layer that we made. If you can hear um, a bit of a scraping, I've actually lost the graphics, the pen to my ta graphics tablet, which is a bit of a pain. So I'm having to do this by the mouse. Suppose it means another job for Amazon to send me out a new one. Don't know where it's gone though, because I only work at the desk. It's one of those things. It's probably a, a store somewhere of all these lost graphic, graphic tablet pens. Okay, so as you can see now, we've actually removed the redness in the building, made it, made it, we've made it stand out a little bit more. Um, as for the rest of our image, then 
maybe we can pick up another layer here and if we go to our yellows we can just increase the saturation of our yellows a little bit and once again put black on top go to our paint bucket tool fill the layer with black black conceals so we can seal all that saturation we made change our top color to white pick up our paintbrush and now very quick and dirty we can actually just go over the yellow in our image and remember there's a lot of yellow in what we see as green is actually comprised up quite a bit of yellow so we just go into some of these areas and just bring a little touch of yellow through so I'm doing this really quickly um, if it was if it was your image just take a little bit more time with it so now we've just brought out some splashes of colour. One other thing I'd like to do is just enhance this area here because at the moment our eye just kind of goes in and stops. If we make, could make this area a bit brighter then it makes it more inviting for our eyes to go down and allows the viewers to explore the image a little bit more. So we come up to our curves layer, we pick up our little finger and this tells us the kind of tones we're going to lighten. So we lighten the tones. In fact, I'm going to go a bit over the top. OK. Once again, put black on top. Fill our image with black to conceal all those that brightness change. We put white on top. Pick up a white paintbrush and then just paint in here with our white brush just to put a bit more detail in that area there. Now as I said we did go a bit over the top and if you do we also have a, an opacity which actually reduces the opacity of the changes we've made so we can tailor that, tweak that to suit Okay, and then any other areas you know we want to just lighten up and all we're doing now is kind of giving our image a little bit of a 3D effect. So if we just come to all those changes that we've made and group them together. So that's the image we started with and with just a few very quick and simple edits we've gone from that to that. Let me know what you think and let me know what changes or what editing you would do to this image. As I say, that's all very, very quick, very simple. You could take a lot more time on it. Um, and if we shot in RAW, then we'd have a lot more leeway to make these edits without breaking down our image quality. So yeah, a lovely image to finish on there. One that I would probably, I mean, we, we do have the autumn colours, which is spectacular. I wonder what it would look like with the spring greens, just as those greens were coming out. Would that make our little stone tower stand out a bit more? I don't know. But it's well found, well composed. Our tower on the left, our stream leading the eye through. Um, I think it was just a little bit flat and we've been able to lift it a little bit. Um, so thanks very much. If you've enjoyed this session please give us a like, so consider subscribing as well.
It's totally free, won't cost you anything. And click that little bell icon to be alerted of when new videos are going to be posted. Now we're in lockdown here again in the UK for the next four weeks. We are going to be releasing regular videos, maybe two, three, possibly even four every week, just to try and keep everybody entertained, distracted from what's going on around us. So if you'd like to take part, consider going to our Facebook page. That's F11 Landscapes. Join, become a member, and look out for our regular notifications of when we're going to be doing a Friday feedback. Submit your image, and maybe we could go through one of yours on here. Look forward to that. Thanks for watching. Bye.